Today, we're going to be looking at the Tokyo Marui, or Tokyo Marie, or Tokyo Mari. I've heard it said a lot of different ways. Uh, for the sake of our review, we're going to call it the TM Spaz 12. Now, we wanted to look at the TM version of this first because they were the first ones to come out with an actual production shotgun. And then we'll compare it to the new ones coming out, both by Echo One and UTG. So let's go take a look at the history. SPAS, which stands for Sporting Purpose Automatic Shotgun, was really more of a marketing ploy for U.S. distribution. It would probably be better called Special Purpose Assault Shotgun. It was one of the first shotguns to be able to be used in dual mode, which meant it could shoot both semi and pump action. Police often prefer using pump action for increased reliability and the ability to shoot non-lethal rounds, such as beanbags or tear gas. Combat shotguns in general will have shorter barrels and synthetic stocks for reduced weight and also be coated in non-reflective paint. Military shotguns are very similar, but are made for battlefield wear and tear and prolonged firing, hence a larger heat shield, which the SPAS-12 would be an example of. It was designed by the Italian company Franchi in the late 70s, who were well known for their high quality sporting shotguns. Production ceased around the year 2000, but the SPAS-12 can still be found among some law enforcement groups and is still a prized collector's item. Pretty big and pretty heavy. Um, although it has a lot of plastic on it, there's definitely some weight to it and it feels solid. And what I want to do is we'll, we'll compare this to the size of a normal M4. This is a classic Army M4. Kind of give you an idea of the size of the two. So it's just about the same length, even though there is no stock. And for another comparison, <clears throat> we can also see the Echo 1, which will be our upcoming review. And again, with the stock, it's almost the same length. Maybe it's just a little bit bigger, but not much. Okay, so what we'll do, let's just start. We have the stockless version. We'll start from the back here. We've got the stockless version. And as far as metal parts go, we do have a metal trigger, trigger guard, release latch. Actually, this is your, our, uh, this, we have the metal trigger, trigger guard, and our safety. That puts the safety on. Can't squeeze the trigger. So this is our lock. If we want to lock the release latch for our shell in place, you can see here, now we won't be able to open it. And then push it in, and that'll allow us to have access to the shell. It just drops out of there. One nice thing about this in comparison to the Echo One's version is it's it's very easy to both load and unload the shell. It just pops right into place. And I would suggest just leaving this open. Don't lock it. In the heat of battle, you're going to end up breaking it off, and it's just going to slow you down. You really don't need to lock it in place. It's, it's not going to go anywhere. And working our way up, you can see here I've got the soft side of the Velcro. Great idea for carrying your shells where you can just put the Velcro right on there. You have access to shells. You can load, unload. And moving up the gun here, we've got our ghost sights. And maybe what we can do is kind of put this at the camera. So you can, you can zoom down that. You can see very wide open sight. Then we've got this huge heat shield, which may look like metal, but actually it's plastic, along with the handle is plastic. We do have at the end, both the, the barrels here are metal and our metal sight. We'll do our best to let you see the inside of this. You can see the three barrels in a triangle shape. And actually, they're, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but they're quite a ways in there from the end of the barrel. And TM's approach to make the design more economical yet reflect the positive elements of a shotgun with this short barrel length, you're able to get a nice spread of the BBs on the target. Okay, now we're gonna load up one of our shells. We've got our speed loader. I'm using KSC 0.25 grams. That's gonna give me a little bit tighter grouping. The spread is nice with the shotgun, it gives you that advantage, but if you spread too much, you might at longer distances, you're gonna, you know, you might shoot around your target. So, but to load it up, simply put.
put it right on top there like you would any other magazine. Okay, now that we have our loaded shell, we'll load up our gun. And we'll check out our performance. Now that we're out on the range here, we're going to test out the performance. Now a lot has been asked about, you know, how hard is this thing to pump? It's not really that hard. Um, you know, I find, I mean, I've got bigger hands and it's, it fits pretty good for me. If somebody's a little bit smaller, it might be kind of tough. I know on Flanker Tanker's video, he mentioned kind of pushing with one hand and pulling with the other. If that works for you, great. What I find is just getting a firm grip right on the, the handle itself and just doing a real quick and it's not that bad. What we're going to do is we're going to take three shots. We've got our target camera down range and I want to show the spread. So we're at 35 feet. We're using 0.25 grams. That's going to give us a little bit tighter grouping. And also we chronoed it earlier. You'll see the, the results up on your screen now. And as you'll see on there, it was pretty consistent. And those are with 0.2 gram, not 0.25. So let's go ahead we'll take our three shots and we'll take a look at the target then. Okay, let's look at our target. And as you can see, I didn't use the vise this time. I mean, we're more looking for a shotgun pattern, not so much exact accuracy. Let's take a look. So I have to say, overall, this is a, is a great gun. Um, we'll be comparing it in our future reviews to the Echo One and the UTG, but I would say this is a solid foundation. And for CQB, It'd be perfect for woodland, you know, it, with the FPS, you're, you're not going to get the distance, but with a little bit of stealth, I think it'll work out well. This is JP for Alleyway Airsoft. Hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time.